what we are doing in this module is whatever we have discussed about style literary style and uh, try to differentiate these styles by explaining Dorothy's style in her novels uh, in light of Virginia Woolf's views that uh, female authors uses female sentences and male authors uses male sentences which are free from uh, fragments in other words. Okay, we would conclude these things in this module. We have talked about purposeful choice of language at several places during this course. In our previous modules, we have talked about it. And right now, we are talking about it with reference to literary style. So, in a way, this module is very important to understand the conclusion about difference between literary and non-literary uh, literary style of males and females and overall the idea of style. Gendered means whether style is linked with male author and female author. The state of a conclusion is no, necessarily not. We can't say this is male style, this is female style. Second question arises, is literary presentation of gender, how gender is talked about in fiction and poetry, etc. Is literary presentation of gender always feminist, always talks about difference about hierarchy, about patriarchy, about power relations between males and females? Again, the answer is necessarily not. There are three main views on relation between language and gender. And by language here, we mean literary as well as non-literary. Number one. Women's language is deficit, ineffective, powerful. Deficit means it lacks power, it lacks some features, some qualities. And this was the idea we started with. If you remember, in the early modules, we talked about women's language, the features of language which were discussed by Robin Lacker. It's not recognized now. This idea that uh, women are powerless because their language is powerless, this is no more acceptable these days. Because this idea of style, of choice of language shows that gender is something stable, whereas gender is not stable, only sex is stable. We are male if we are born male we remain male we are female if we are born female no change but gender changes over time as we move along life it changes through different socializations through different social interactions we pass through different norms set of norms they set our perception they develop our perception about womanhood and manhood. Okay. Second view is that women's language is defined by males or by patriarchy. This is dominance theory. Clearly, that women, what kind of language a woman should use? This would be defined by males. So, here, the theory of dominance is working and uh, this is the view that is propagated, that is discussed, that is protested against by feminists and this is a kind of political movement, the second view. The third view 
that is directly related with our current discussion with our current talk is that there is no direct link between language features and gender. So, how can we say that fragmentary sentences are only used by female authors? Why male authors can't do that? Language variation is result of many social factors and gender is just one of them. We vary language according to our profession, according to our roles and relations, according to our class, so many things. And gender is just one of the factors that causes variation in our choice of language. So, how can we make a direct link with gender? Linguistic features have more than one meaning and gender issues are just one of those meanings. So, it is not language, it is the use of language and understanding of language, the meaning of language that is or is not linked with the gender. The words in language, the grammar of language do not have any link with language. However, interpretation, understanding, meaning of language that may or may not have link with gender. This is called post feminism and this is what prevails these days and this is the in fact, this is the conclusion that we want to draw from our talk about female and male literary star. For example, we have seen that Sea of Peace, Community of Practice, we have many times talked about it, that is why Sea of Peace and Workplaces, they are all, uh, one type of Sea of Peace, you know this. So, we have seen in discussion about Sea of Peace and Workplaces that they determine our choice of language more than gender norms. You are working in a bank, you are working in an office. So, uh, this workplace has its own norms, whether you are male or female, your sex will not determine uh, your use of language in, in such circumstances. The norms of that institute, that workplace would tell you how would you talk, how would you write, what kind of linguistic behavior you will adopt. A female in a male dominated office, you remember the example, we have talked about them in previous modules. A female in a male dominated office may choose masculine language, she is working with male, but her sex is female. So, she would adopt masculine language and men who are working in elder care centers, in elder care centers because this job relates with feminine uh, type of people. Feminine means feminine features and feminine features of language are politeness first of all and softness and uh, care for others. We have talked about these things. So, there the males are doing work of female. So, they would adopt female language but their sex is male. So, uh, uh, what I am trying here to tell you is that uh, it is not our sex, it is our role in a workplace that determines what type of language we will choose. This is also practiced by literary writers, same happens in literature. So, we conclude that female writers may write using masculine language. If in common places we can uh, switch over language, so here too female style can be adopted by males and male style can be opted by females. The choice of literary style is not essentially linked with gender of the writer. It is linked ultimately with the purpose of the writer. What type of text that person is writing, that person is writing poetry, novel, drama, number one, because 
for every type of text we have certain language conventions so number one the convention of the text type you are going to write and number two your purpose you want to criticize something you want to entertain your reader you want to inform your reader or you want to uh, do you want to write for all these purposes in the same text so that would determine what kind of style what kind of choice of language you will offer